Welcome to my course uh, electrochemical energy storage and this is module number 2 where I am talking about the definitions and measuring methods pertinent to lithium ion batteries and uh, this is lecture number 9 where I will be talking on impedance spectroscopy measurement and its analysis. So, first I will define the concept of equivalent circuit presentation of an electrochemical cell. Then subsequently we will talk about description of measurement in both time domain and frequency domain. Then third I will introduce impedance due to several electrochemical process, what are the typical uh, impedance and then I will show a short key study to uh, further illustrate these concepts which I will cover in this lecture. Now, let us start with the concept of equivalent circuit representation of an electrochemical cell. By this time you can understand that in case of a rechargeable lithium ion battery, we have a negative electrode usually graphite is used which is having a layer structure and an, a positive electrode is used which is basically lithium, nickel, manganese, cobalt, one third, one third, one third or slightly different composition um, involving this ratio where the total amount of nickel, manganese, cobalt always is 1. So, this is basically LiMO2 kind of structure is a layered material. Now, uh, you have the construction where uh, you have separator in between which is soaked with electrolyte. Then in one end you have the cathode material which is coated on aluminum foil. Other end you have anode material or the negative electrode which is basically graphite which is coated on the copper foil. Now, uh, each process can be represented with an electric circuit um, denoting the key characteristics. So, electric circuit equivalent of each of this I will try to introduce. The first one is a double layer phenomena which is like a capacitor you have anion or cation that is adsorbing on the electrode surface. Then there is a charge transfer phenomena involved resistance to electron or ion transfer across the electrochemical interface. While I was talking the electrochemical potential already I introduced these concepts to you. Then there is a diffusion phenomena, this is a complete circuit component, it is difficult to uh, actually compile in a uh, electrical circuit equivalent uh, that I will discuss later. Uh, due to basically two problem, one is the ion concentration in uh, space and also their relative movement. And there is another less uh, uh, considered phenomena which is EMI phenomena uh, and this is related to the inductance. So, uh, you consider the visualization of a typical lithium ion battery various electrochemical process are occurring which may result in flow of current. So, it is no more equilibrium process. Adsorption of ions on the electrode surface, this is a double layer phenomena I mentioned. Migration of ions or charge into the electrochemical interface, this is a charge transfer phenomena. Then diffusion of ions within the electrode structure or within the electrolyte that is a diffusion phenomena and electromagnetic induction phenomena which just I introduced. This is due to current flowing within a tightly coiled stacked electrode in the electrochemical cell. When I will talk about the uh, construction of the cylindrical battery or the stacked battery like power cell, then this will be clear to you. So, this already I have introduced majority of the electrochemical measurement techniques that involved the varying voltage or current with time. So, it is a time dependent 
signal and measure the response of other signal. So, if you are applying voltage measuring current or applying current measuring voltage. So, accordingly you have a chrono method and a voltammetry. These are all time domain measurement. In steady state, if you consider chrono amperometry, current flow is steady that is governed by all resistance and also the diffusion process that I was talking about which do not undergo any variation with time. So, double layer is completely charged for example, but in transient chrono ampliometry, the shape of the I versus T curve is dependent on the process that is involved and it is governed by the way these processes are moving towards the equilibrium condition that is the steady state condition. So, this time domain measurement sometimes it is not um, uh, very fruitful. Uh, if you convert the time domain to frequency domain, then this electrical electrochemical measurements are more um, uh, prominent and this also I uh, defined in one of my earlier lecture, it is called impedance metry, where you can see that the red line is a specific state of charge of the battery. It could be half charge or half discharge or full charge. So, this is the state of the charge and then in that situation we are applying uh, a sinusoidal uh, voltage of small amplitude and variable frequency. So, the frequency you can vary from kilohertz usually from hertz to 100 kilohertz not more than that otherwise inductive effect will come into play. And then uh, eventually you measure the uh, variation of current. So, voltage and current um, in this particular system they are not in phase as you can see there is a phase lag. So, um, based on this measurement we uh, can define a spectroscopy and which we call a impedance spectroscopy. So, by definition impedance metry is a measurement technique that involves the study of electrochemical process in frequency domain not in time domain. So, as I said a small AC voltage perturbation is superimposed on the existing potential value. So, existing potential value uh, the state of charge or state of discharge which is at a certain frequency um, you can apply and AC current response that is analyzed to collect the amplitude, frequency and phase shift data of the current signal that is measured. So, V um, the voltage that is given by this uh, and the current is uh, uh, separated uh, by this phase. So, this phase angle is defined here. Uh, so, uh, from the complex impedance that is V by T, it is something like uh, resistance in a AC field. So, this is given by this. So, V A by I A is Z A uh, and this is nothing but um, exponential of J phi. So, this is uh, you can expand the Euler equation J D cos phi uh, plus J sin phi. During electrochemical impedance spectroscopy, ideally you should have a counter electrode. Here I have mentioned a auxiliary electrode. Then there is a provision for a reference electrode if you wish to put. If not, then um, this reference electrode and uh, uh, the counter electrode they are short circuited. The provision is there in the in the equipment and then you have your sample this working electrode. So, you are um, um, your material is in a standard EC DC condition and then you are applying um, the potential as a function of time and then measuring the uh, current as a function of time. So, uh, to give it uh, ultimately um, transform into the frequency domain. So, a frequency uh, response analyzer that is used potentiostat galvanostat system usually equipped with this. 
uh, which is having a generator which can uh, change the phase uh, in accordance and uh, this is the analyzer and finally, you get um, the current output and from that current output uh, you can eventually measure the value of impedance in its complex plane in imaginary and real term. So, uh, for a normal um, uh, solid uh, insulator, uh, you can have various possibilities and this uh, uh, change in possibilities, uh, if you plot current versus potential uh, in an oscilloscope, you fit the data. Uh, so, you get a Lisa juice, juice figure, sometimes it is uh, an ellipse, elliptical kind of thing, uh, sometimes it is a circle, sometimes a straight line depending on the uh, relative condition between the voltage and current and associated frequency. So, the representation is down, done of this impedance uh, spectroscopy either in terms of a boat plot or a Nyquist plot. Blo boat plot is actually two plots in one, the abscissa is uh, the log of frequency and the first ordinate is the modulus of the impedance jet as I said z is a complex number. So, this is the modulus of the impedance and the second ordinate is usually the phase shift, you can see the phase shift here. And you can um, work it out that if you have a complex impedance, you can uh, have a real part and an imaginary part, you can always uh, uh, get the modulus of uh, the value of z and, um, and uh, then uh, you can make uh, the boat plot because frequency you know and phi you are measuring as well. In case of Nyquist plot, the abscissa is the real component of the complex impedance. So, this is uh, z prime and uh, ordinate is the negative uh, of the imaginary impedance component. So, for a normal uh, uh, RC circuit, uh, you get uh, if you do the impedance uh, uh, metry, then you get a circle like this. So, here I have shown the modulus uh, is equal to real part plus uh, imaginary part and uh, from a series of data you can estimate this value. So, if I consider a simple electrochemical capacitor, it is uh, having a pure electrochemical say super capacitor uh, which I already explained that uh, this is uh, constructed out of a activated carbon. So, ions get absorbed on the surface of the activated carbon sheets as the voltage is disturbed from the steady state value uh, that represents the electric double layer capacitor which already I um, described in one of my earlier lectures. In addition to it, the current also flows and that has an added resistance uh, due to the electrolyte because electrolyte is not uh, something which is a superconductor. So, it has its own internal resistance. So, you can model it that you have a register part which is connected in series with a double layer capacitor. And then you uh, talk about the impedance. So, resistance will come DC resistance of the electrolyte part and for a capacitor the resistive part is given by 1 by j, j is nothing but root over of minus 1. Uh, and the frequency is concerned and capacity double layer capacitance. So, you just multiply it with j, j in both sides. So, this comes like this. So, in the time domain measurement al uh, already you have seen that it is almost a constant DC uh, kind of uh, voltage that is there and you are applying a perturbation of uh, AC frequency and the current uh, will assume this. I leave it on you to um, see the exponential kind of decay of the current uh, from higher secondary uh, conception, you can do that. But if you now convert it to the frequency domain, then you will get a straight line here and this uh, part will actually tell you what is the uh, electrolyte resistance and uh, frequency. Um, mm, this part will be at higher frequency and uh, this part will be positive 
at uh, this uh, particular frequency. So, it will be a basically straight line where it will have a single value of z prime and uh, um, z double prime will change. Now, in real electrochemical system, because uh, of various parameters like the surface is rough, um, the rate of re reaction is uh, uh, distributed, it is not uh, single um, uh, rate constant. Uh, this uh, does not behave like uh, a real capacitor. Uh, so, the presence of a ideal capacitor uh, is replaced by a constant phase element which is abbreviated as CP. Uh, this is uh, in a non intuitive circuit element that is uh, invented while looking at the response in the real world uh, electrochemical impedance uh, graph. And the mathematical definition is very similar to the capacitor. So, this impedance is 1 by uh, q 0 z omega and this n term is there. So, n is uh, the number between 0 and 1. So, n equal to 1 then q 0 is uh, CDL uh, this thing the phase is defined as uh, something like uh, minus 90 uh, into the value of n. So, the Nyquist plot of such element um, is a straight line uh, like the earlier one, but it is not parallel to the ordinate. So, measurement in frequency domain of EIS the constant phase element that uh, rotates this z prime and z double prime axis by this angle what I mentioned 90 degree into 1 minus n in the clockwise pattern. Therefore, a semicircle which I showed for the RC circuit um, that might look a bit flattened uh, semicircle due to the axis rotation because of this constant phase element. So, when n is actually 1 then element uh, acts like a perfect capacitor for n is equal to 0 the element acts, acts like a perfect resistor and when n is 0.5 the element described a semi infinite diffusion behavior. So, in later slide we will talk about this. Again we come back to the charge transfer phenomena and already I defined the transfer of charge across the electrified interface. So, in a typical half cell reaction that I have shown that lithium ion that is uh, taking electron that is getting reduced and forming uh, lithium. The electron migrates uh, along with the electrode electrolyte interface uh, to reduce the oxidized ion in the electrolyte to the reduced state. Now, this migration uh, in the interface is not easy and there is a resistance involved. Uh, this resistance to the this migration is provided by the interface and uh, this process is independent of another process that is occurring at this interface. Um, this is called double layer charging. So, in the last lecture we talked about uh, um, the electrode kinetics uh, that is represented by this Butler Volmer uh, equation. So, here um, this n value uh, while I derive it I consider this n is equal to 1. So, you can consider n equal to 1. So, uh, this is uh, uh, another way you can um, basically plot the Tafel equation where uh, you can see the linearity this uh, log i versus this plot is not being maintained particularly at the higher current limit. So, one way of measuring the parameter of this process uh, in time domain is uh, the so called linear sweep voltammetry which also I have explained in one of my earlier lectures. Now, I will consider the charge transfer uh, across a electrified interface. You remember we talked about when electrochemical potential I mentioned that, that uh, now uh, it is a uh, transfer of charge across the electrified a charged interface. So, then your um, impedance uh, you can construct it uh, 
from the electrolyte and uh, this two one is uh, this charge transfer resistance is also introduced here and this is the simplified form. So, uh, from Tafel equation I already defined this R d z f 0 is uh, when uh, this uh, this value of over potential is almost 0 and that is related to this charge transfer resistance. So, that is uh, uh, almost an equilibrium process uh, over potential is very close to 0. Now, this uh, transient a bit uh, change because I put this relation again uh, how the current decays and uh, this part um, actually does not go to 0 uh, unlike the other case where this charge transfer uh, situation was not there. So, this is a time domain uh, uh, plot and uh, if you do the uh, impedance plot in the frequency domain uh, between z double prime and z prime which we call Nyquist plot then a uh, semi almost semi circle you will get, but depending on the C p uh, you can have uh, slight uh, um, depressed semi circle, where this uh, maxima point here uh, uh, the value of this uh, omega that means related to frequency as you know omega is equal to 2 pi f and this is the charge transfer resistance and this is the double layer capacitance that is equal to 1. Um, uh, and R c is the time constant that is involved. So, that is also defined as tau. So, omega tau is equal to 1 and higher frequency you will get in this side and relatively lower frequency will get in the other side. So, this part is the resistance of the electrolyte that uh, you are getting that also I have defined and uh, the diameter from here to here this is electrolyte plus charge transfer resistance. So, depending on this frequency, frequency I have not defined, but certainly this is at low frequency range you can estimate if uh, from this kind of circuit is assumed where this charge transfer resistance and double layer capacitance they are connected in parallel you get from the Nyquist plot you can have this value extracted. right? So, what you will have to do? You will have to construct a correct kind of equivalent circuit and then from your measured data you will have to simulate uh, according to the circuit. So, you need to know that uh, if this is my ideal circuit and it is completely matching with my experimental value, then all this individual component what is the electrolytic resistance, what is the charge transfer resistance, what is the double layer capacitance everything I can get out of my impedance spectroscopy measurement and re relevant analysis. Now, we will talk about the diffusion process when the electrochemical cell is polarized a current flows through the electrode along with the reduced spaces being produced or oxidized spaces being generated. right? So, if you consider this half cell reaction um, when uh, this is uh, um, the discharge state. So, lithium is going into the electrolyte. So, lithium ions are provided from the electrolyte because initially it goes through the electrolyte and lithium ions are inserted uh, between graphite layer. So, uh, so that case uh, if it is there. Uh, actually this is the reverse part. So, the charge transfer process is extremely fast the current will be limited by how fast lithium is moving in the electrolyte and how fast lithium ions move between the graphite layers. For a constant current generated at a fixed concentration profile of lithium ion versus lithium will be present inside the electrolyte and graphite interface. So, the time domain uh, spectra that uh, is something like this where lithium is basically getting diffused inside the graphite layer. So, one can have a constant steady state concentration profile inside the electrode uh, 
you can see uh, the electrolyte electrode part there is a concentration difference. So, from here the diffusion starts in electrolyte it has sufficient concentration. So, this diffusion process it follows either uh, fix fast law um, the atomic flux uh, or ionic flux is diffusion coefficient and concentration gradient or the second law where del c by del t this is um, varies with del 2 c uh, by del x square gradient. So, let us consider the simplest case of diffusion um, that is the case where uh, a reduced species is generated at the electrode and electrolyte interface uh, say that is lithium and it has to diffuse into the infinite lattice say in the graphite. So, lithium plus is coming from the uh, positive electrode part and transporting through the electrolyte at the interface it is uh, getting uh, reduced from L i plus to metallic lithium and then it is going inside the um, graphite and here you can consider that uh, the source of lithium inside the graphite is almost negligible and then it is uh, progressively the diffusion will take place. So, the concentration change with time this is governed by the fixed uh, second law. Initially the concentration of lithium as I said is 0 throughout the graphite lattice except at the interface. At the interface concentration is C 0 concentration of lithium ion at the electrolyte it is same like this this is the initial condition at t equal to 0 last view slide I have shown it. Boundary condition you can apply for this process concentration of lithium when x is infinite is 0 and C 0 at x equal to 0 from the construction and now uh, this is the exercise uh, for you to obtain the impedance value of this process and try to solve this problem. As a hint the impedance of this process is uh, del eta by uh, del i and that is del E by del C into del C by del J into uh, del J by del i. So, E is a small potential, J is the current density, see the concentration and this one, this term uh, you can obtain from Nernst equation. The, the voltage that you get out of the concentration difference and this part del j del i is related to the area of the electrode. Now, you solve the fixed law to obtain del c by del j and relate the current density with flux of ions from the fixed first law. If you do that then you can obtain the impedance value of this process and uh, this is a bit complicated, but uh, if you understand the way I have uh, introduced the concept. I think uh, and with some knowledge of diffusion uh, I think it will not be very problematic to solve you the impedance value. So, impedance of a semi infinite diffusion case usually takes the form like this one and uh, if it is more generalized then uh, uh, it takes the form of this one again this uh, needs a little bit work out. Uh, to do um, following the standard complex algebra theory. So, the Randall circuit for this kind of situation where semi infinite diffusion case is operative here you can see that uh, instead of uh, only this uh, e electrolyte and RCT and uh, double layer capacitor we have introduced an additional term which is in series with our, our R C T value, the charge transfer value, and if you see the uh, uh, the corresponding impedance graph, this will introduce a tail at lower frequency because of this. So the Nyquist plot, the impedance manifests itself as a straight line. Usually, this angle is 45 degree slope, and this impedance is also known as Warburg impedance. In an electrochemical cell where all the major process electric double layer phenomena 
charge transfer phenomena, semi infinite diffusion phenomena occur. Equivalent circuit is a parallel combination of the double layer capacitance with impedance of a Faradic process, which is turned uh, connected to the electrolyte resistance in series. This is the equivalent circuit that is shown. Nyquist plot of this process with this type of Randall circuit is shown also here. In this electrochemical impedance spectroscopy experiment, the experimental plot is matched with a designed equivalent circuit. So, you can in the software you can design this kind of circuit uh, according to your understanding on the physical phenomena and then match with your experimental value and then the software itself gives uh, all kinds of uh, parameters which is of our relevant relevance including uh, the diffusion coefficient. So, one such plot will give you electrolyte resistance, then charge transfer resistance, double layer capacitance and not only that from this uh, Warburg impedance you can also estimate the diffusion coefficient. I will show certain practical uh, data on this, uh, but certainly this has made our life quite simpler because uh, a, a software like Z SimWin you can construct this circuit physically and it will do all the calculation and simulate the data according to the circuit and you just match it. So, it is just like a black box, but if you understand the process and if you work it out that what will be its impedance value and uh, in, in uh, real, real part and imaginary part and then construct the uh, circuit. Uh, although it is very, very tedious, I think your understanding will be quite good. So, this is the case study that uh, I wanted to show a metal nanoparticle trapped between a graphene layer sheet. Uh, so, this is um, the Randall circuit that uh, we constructed. Uh, you can see electrolyte is there, then graphene metal interface uh, is this register, then the charge transfer resistance is here, then um, the CPE value instead of CDL we put it here and uh, graphene electrolyte uh, double layer uh, that also a capacitor. This is a quite complicated circuit at this stage for you to understand, but it works well. Uh, so, each interface has analogous circuit component which affects the impedance like graphene metal, graphene electrolyte double layer, metal electrolyte double layer. And then uh, we could get uh, the experimental plot which is um, the symbol and we could also get the phase versus frequency plot and we also get the board plot uh, and then we fitted uh, along with this circuit and you can see it is a perfect match, uh, almost a perfect match although this is the experiment that was done in our laboratory. And then I can calculate the electrochemical resistance, I can calculate the CG electrolyte uh, double layer, graphene electrolyte double layer, I can calculate the uh, graphene and metal uh, this resistance this value graphene and metal interface. I can also, also estimate the uh, constant felt uh, constant phase element values here including the n and you see here n is 0.518 I mentioned it should be between 0 to 1 and charge transfer resistance. So, this EIS experiment can be used to describe uh, several complex electrochemical process uh, quantitatively, which is not otherwise possible by traditional time domain kind of measurements. However, this analysis of the experimental results as I said they are quite tricky and uh, they are open to several interpretation and how well you can define your uh, Randall circuit uh, that uh, will prove your case. So, these are the references uh, for uh, um, general in, uh, in impedance related thing you should go to this book uh, as a study material and this is an excellent book by Ozarem 
uh, which talks about electrochemical impedance spectroscopy. Uh, it is a wheelie book and application notes by several um, Gamry and Metro home, their site uh, that you can study. So, concept of equivalent circuit representation of electrochemical cell we have described, then difference between measurements in time and frequency domain that we have demonstrated and instrumentation which is pertinent to EIS measurement that is described, then impedance calculation for several electrochemical phenomena that also has been described and one simple case study on the application of EIS to the electrochemical system has been provided. Thank you for your attention.